Hello, in this video, I'm going to go over how to use my platformer game maker to create 2D platformer games inside Unreal Engine 5. To get started, when you open up the project, you should be in the title level. And if you click the play button, it should open up the main menu. And if we click this create button, it will take us to the 2D platformer level creator. And here's where we're going to design and create our 2D platformer level. We can use the WASD keys to move around and zoom out and zoom in with the mouse wheel. This top bar, we can also use the mouse wheel. And this basically displays all the um, actors slash items that we can use to design our 2D level. Simply just select any one of them to um, select it. And we can just use the left mouse button to place it anywhere in the world. And we can also just click the right mouse button and this will delete any item inside of our hand. A quick note, in order for any level to work, we need to make sure that we have a player character, which is in the level. So if I just select him here, I can click the start button and now I will be able to play this level. In order to go back, once you have started to play in the level, just click the one button because um, I couldn't bind it to the escape key because otherwise it would close the whole project. So if you click the start button, just press the one button to um, go back to what you were doing before. If I just click this erase button and remove him, and now if I try and click the start button, nothing will work. So Player character is always needed in order to test slash play a level. Next, let's go through all the different buttons. Right now, we can see this show is set to all. This basically means that it's going to show every single item that I can use to design my level inside of this kit. If I click the button again, it will filter and now only show me the enemies. If I click the button again, it will filter again and show me only the platforms. And what we can do is, if you want to, you can create your own filters and filter different categories of items into different sets. I'll be going through that later in this tutorial. The next thing we can do is change the background. So currently I think there are four different backgrounds that we can change. If I click this button, it will change the background. So we have, I think like two sky ones, one ice one and one, which is just black. Next we have layers. So we can position certain items in different layers. So if I just um, select my player character, so I'm just gonna go to my all. If I select my player character and place them, and then let's say I wanted to just design my level. I can select this tree. And if I just make this, click this layer button, and now it says layer top, what this basically means is every item that I place is gonna be on the top layer. So I can just place this tree and it's gonna be in front of my player character. However, if say I go to the layer and it's back and I select it, now this tree is gonna basically appear behind my player character. If I place this in the um, center, then it may just do a mix match where sometimes it'll be behind and sometimes it'll be ahead. Some items such as um, obstacles, it doesn't matter what layer we place them, they will always damage the player character. This is more for just like designing the level. Next we have the toggle grid. So if I just click this button, it will get rid of my grid. Maybe you don't want to see the grid when you're designing the level. So you can just toggle that grid if you don't want to see it. I can click it again and the grid will come back. We can only design a level if it's inside of the grid, by the way but the grid space is pretty big. Next, we have the erase button, which I briefly used. Simply just select it, and then we just go over any um, actor slash item you've placed and select it there, then it will erase it. We have the load. So before we go over that, I'm first gonna create a level. So if I just select this block, place it, and then select my player character. And let's say I play some coins. If I go save, here, I can enter what I want my level to be called. So let's just call this level one. And if I click the save button, it will save that level. Then I can click this close button. And let's say I just click this clear all. This will remove everything inside of my level. But now if I click load and select level one, and then click this load button, it will load up my level one. So you can use those two buttons to save and load any levels that you've created. So if we click the load button again, I also created this level called test. So I'll just select it, click load, and it will bring up that level. If I click the load button one more time, you can see it has this load custom save. Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna explain what that means. Basically, I also have a Discord, and the idea is maybe you can join it and you can share the levels you've made with other creators. Okay, next I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna go clear all, and I'm just gonna briefly explain how each item works. So, 
I'm just going to place these destructible blocks over here and here. And if I place my player character here, so the first item is this destructible block. If I click the star button and I hit it with my head, we can see the block destroys itself. Next, we have some spikes. So if the player character um, goes on the spikes, they'll die. The player character currently has three hearts by default. Although, if you hit the middle mass button on him, you can change his health, his speed, his height, and whether he has the ability to double jump. So there are a couple of settings you can change inside of him there. Next, we have some coins. So these are just classic coins which you can place. And then next, we have this um, moving platform. So by default, it's not going to move, but like the player character, if you click the middle mouse button, we can select the vertical distance we want it to move and the speed that we want it to move at. If I click the done button, we can see our platform will start to move from the location we've placed it. So I can just change this. So if I just select it again. Maybe I want this to move much faster. So I'll make the speed 10 and you can see it moves much faster. The next item we have is the trampoline. So we can just place this and this will basically launch the player character. Again, we can click the middle mouse button to change how far it will launch the player character. We have the saws, which work kind of the same as the moving platform. We can move them vertically or upwards. And if the player character basically overlaps them, they will die. We have some hearts. If the player character um, collects these hearts, it will heal them. Next, I have this checkpoint actor. If I just select it and say place it on my level, if I go start, if I now cross this checkpoint, if I die, I'll respawn at that checkpoint because that's why I crossed it. So we have this um, championship trophy, trophy. The way this works is you're going to place this at the end of your level and if you cross it, the player will beat the game and then they'll be exited. Next, let's scroll over. And I'm just going to select this block and place a few more blocks just so I can explain the other actors. This next actor is one of the enemies and we can basically just place them. With these frogs, we can customize how they jump. So we can control the, how far they jump up and at what speed, and if they jump horizontally. But by default, they're gonna jump up a vertical distance of four and a speed of three. So I'll just click start. The frogs will just start jumping. And the idea is I can like run underneath these guys. So I'm just gonna erase my frogs. And the next enemy I have is this um, guy. The way he'll work is he'll basically move towards the right and towards the left and will shoot missiles at the player character. We can customize how fast they um, fire their missiles and at what speed. The next actor we have is this falling platform. So the way this works is if I just step on it, after I go on it, it'll begin to fall. And then we have some bricks. So um, a special thing with the bricks is if I right click on this, it will show me all the bricks I have in my level. So I set that up so there are like 12 different bricks. And I can just select this one. And now this will be the brick that I select. So we can basically customize um, what brick we want. And if I hit the right mouse button again, um, this menu will close. This walking enemy works similarly to the bricks. So if I right click, I have two walking enemies and I can select which one I want it to be. These walking enemies work by moving towards the left and towards the right. Later in this video, I'll go over how to set it up so that we can basically put um, items into categories if you want multiple of the same items. And then we have some trees, which we can basically use to decorate our level. So those are all the items slash um, actors inside of the project and how to basically set up and create a level. And now if I go back and go play, we can play any of the levels that we created. I'll just go to this level one and it'll take me to the level one that I created. Although I didn't put um, an exit, but if I had put an exit here, so if I just go P to bring up the pause menu, return to the menu and play the test level, because this has an exit. If I get towards the end, then it will take me out of here. Hello, next I'm gonna go over how we can add our own tile sets. So currently in the default project, we're going to have these, I think there are 15 I added, these 15 tile sets. We're going to go over how you can add more blocks if you'd like to do that. So to do that, first um, find some sprites that you want to add. I think itch.io is a good website for finding um, 2D sprites. One thing with the um, sprites that you find, make sure that it is a tile set, which is 16 by 16. Once you have that, download your tile set 
and I'm just going to create a new folder for mine. So I'll just call this example. And then drag your tileset image into this folder. So I just dragged one piece of the tileset. Just right click on it and go to fractions and apply paper to the texture settings. Once you've done this, to make it a tileset, just right click on it and go to fractions, create tileset. And now this will be a tileset. We want to double click and head inside here. And as you can see, um, it's quite big and it doesn't select on any specific tile. What we're going to do is change the tile size to be 16 by 16. That way we can select um, any specified point. So we're going to choose one of these blocks to be a tile inside of our level creator project. I'm going to select this block. With the block that you select, make sure that you give it collision. And you can do this by clicking this add box, then clicking this colliding tiles. That way you know um, this tile has collision on it. Then what you want to do is go to the platform creator folder and go to the data table and we want to go to the tile database. And once you're here, just click add because we're going to add a new tile. And the first thing it's going to ask us for is our display icon. This is going to be the icon that we select in order to place this tile. I currently don't have one. So what I normally do is with the tile set that I download, um, we can just right click on it, go to fractions, extract sprites and change the sprite extraction mode to grid and make it 16 by 16 and go extract this will create um, a sprite for each of them now that we've done this find the tile icon that you want it to be so i'm going to choose this sprite i'm just going to rename this example icon if you had a custom image that you wanted it to be what you could do is just Right click on the um, image and go Sprites and create Sprite. And that can also be the image if you wanted it to be. If you do it that way, I recommend that the image be 32 pixels by 32 pixels. Once we've done this, we can go back to our um, data table and to our tile database. And I'm going to select the example icon. So this is going to be the display icon that is when I select the Sprite. Then we want to select this tile and select the tile set that we just imported slash made. So it was called terrain underscore one underscore tile set. Then we need to select this package tile index. So this is just gonna let the game know um, which tile it should select from this tile set. So if we go back to it, um, if I select this tile, under editing tile, we can see that this is tile 12. So if I select this one, this is tile 36. So this is tile 12. So under here in this data table, Make this package tile index tile 12. So now when we place this tile, it's going to be the tile 12 in this tile set. A spawnable actor, we can just leave this blank. And then we have item set. This basically means do we want this specific tile to be grouped with a bunch of different items? So currently I have it so that um, all the tiles on this are under the item set block. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I just change this to be block and close this and go play and go to my um, level creator level. Now if I go here and right click, my tile is going to be here. To create a new item set, what we can do is just close this and go to our blueprints folder and go to the enums folder then go to item categories and click add enumerator and we can add a new item. So I'm just going to call this example category. Then if we head back to our tile um, database, under item set, I can change this to be example category. And then let me also change this block to be part of example category. And now I go save and go play and go create. If I go here, if I right click on it, these two are part of the same um, category because we put them in the example category. And here you can basically group loads of actors together if you'd like to do that. So if you remember at the start of the video, I was kind of filtering the different um, actors by categories. Here's where we um, do this. So I made like four different categories. In order to add another category, we go to the enums folder, go to the filter category, and we just add enumerator. I can just call this example. And if I go to my tile database and change this to filter category example, now if I go play, Go create and go click on this. When I go to the example, it will only show me the red tile, which I put in the example category. Hello, next we're going to go over how you can add your own custom actors to the project. 
So if I just go to a platform creator and go to the data table, this time let's go to the item database. And the way we add custom items is kind of similar to how we add custom tiles. So to do this, you just go to add, and then you select the display icon that you want it to have. So for this example, I'll just select this first image. Then you select the actor that you want to spawn. So for this example, I'm going to make an actor. So go to my blueprint folder, and let me just go to blueprint class, select actor, and I'll call this example. So we go inside here. For this actor, I'm just going to make this be a cube. And then there's one important thing that you need to do in order to make this work with the system. And that is, we just need to go to components and go add, and then look for the spawnable actor component. So just make sure that's included. And here you could write the blueprint that you want this certain actor to do. Once you've done that, you can then go to spawn actor. And then if I just select the example, and place this actor, it's gonna spawn this blueprint. This display icon is basically gonna be the hover slash preview icon of this blueprint. I can select if I want this to be part of an item set and if I want this to be part of a category. So we can just close this. And then to test this all out, let's go to play, create. And we can see I have my um, example item that I added. If I select it, we can see it's this cube. And I can just place it here. And let's just say I go save. And let's call this cube. I can close this and clear it all, remove everything. And then I can go to load, select the cube, and click load. And now we'll add my custom cube that I've added to this level. So that's how we can add your own custom items if you'd like to do that. Next, I'm going to go over how to change the player character in case you want to do that, if you have your own character. To do that, just go to the Blueprint folder, Characters, select the 2D side scroller PP, and then here you should see this animations. Currently, the only four animations that the player character will do, that is jump, run, do that idle, or be hurt. So here you would just replace this with um, your own custom character if you have one. And the final thing I'm going to show you is how to load in other people's levels who've made levels using this kit. So to do that, you want to click the load button and then you want to see this enter custom save name. So I just briefly close this. What we're going to do is we just right click on any folder and go um, show an explorer. What we're going to do is navigate to the save folder and then you want to look for save themes. And here there's a save file for each level that we have created. If you have another person's level, it will also be a .sav file. So what you want to do is once you have that file, is you want to drag it and import it into this folder. Once you've done that, it's not going to automatically appear here. In order to have it appear, what you need to do is enter the custom save name. So let's, for example, pretend we were sent a save file, which was called 54. We type in 54, then click load custom save. If it finds it, then it will load that level here. And then simply you can just click the level and then click load and it will load up that level. I've also created a discord for the server where you can connect with other people who have this kit. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. So make sure you join it and that way you can share levels if you've created some in the kit. One thing to note, if you modify the kit too much, so let's pretend you've added your own actors and maybe you've changed the images or some of the default sprites, then it may not work. This will kind of work if you've not edited the project too much, because for example, if you put this custom cube in a level, the other person's project may not have it. So this will kind of just work if you do not modify the project too much. So that's all. If enough interest is shown, then um, I may do some updates where I just add some of the community ideas. Maybe you want like another actor, which I've not added here. I'll be able to add that. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoy the project and have a nice day.